is my letter right back to you. Every question on the radio, we both know we gotta go. And this ain't nothing personal. Never said it them, and now we know. Every question on the radio, we both know we gotta go. And this ain't nothing personal. Never said it them, and now we know. Hello everyone, my name is Amos for amosyomixing.com and in this tutorial I'm just going to show you how I actually go ahead to set up a reverb for my snare drum. Um, this song is called Love Letter, it's by the artist Sam Rodriguez and it's produced by Victor Encarnacion. So I just want to quickly jump right in um, into the snare section. I'm just going to play a little bit with the track on and then I'm just going to isolate, um, I'm just going to solo the snare drum and then just talk a little bit further about how I actually went ahead to uh, set up the reverb for the snare. So here's with the track on and maybe we try, I'm just going to um, solo this. This is my letter right back to you. Every question on the radio, we both know we gotta go. And this ain't nothing personal, never said. Alright, so you can actually hear the reverb on the snare drum. Let me just play um, in solo just for you to hear uh, how the, the reverb sounds like and I'm going to take it out so you can hear what the reverb is actually contributing to the snare drum. So this is with the reverb on. And here's with it out. Alright, so you can hear it's actually doing quite a big difference um, for this song in particular. And let me just show you what I have got going on for my reverb. So you can see right here on my Pro Tools session, I actually have um, two different snare drums. Uh, they are being triggered by trigger. Um, so what I've got going on is that both snares have actually have their sense, as you can see right here, sense to snare verb. Um, so the, the first snare and the second snare are being sent at unity gain to my snare verb and my snare verb is just basically an aux track um, in Pro Tools and what I have got going on is the EMT 140 by UAD. Um, what I have is just the A plate. So the EMT 140 gives you three different um, plate sounds. So you have the A, B and C. They all are going to sound a little bit different uh, to each other. So I highly recommend you just actually going in and actually audition um, all three plates so they can pick the one that you uh, actually want to use in your song. Um, to me, to my ear, the C plate actually sounds the longest even for the same um, time that you have right here. So if I were to zoom in, Closely, you can see right here. This is actually the reverb time um, of the of the reverb itself. So you can see it's about barely about three seconds. Um, so I'm just gonna, for the sake of fun, I'm just gonna isolate. Uh, or rather, I'm just gonna play through all the, the three different plates so they can hear how each plate sounds like. So this plate A. And here's B. And here's C. So you can hear that um, as, as I get to plate B and plate C, not only does it get darker, but the reverb time also gets longer, even for three seconds itself. So A sounds the clearest to me, and that's why I actually went ahead to choose uh, plate A. Um, and the reason why I chose three seconds, uh, not a hard and fast rule, usually I like to time my reverb such that the decay of the reverb will actually be just before the actual transient hit of the next snare drum. So what this means is that, let's say, um, if I would zoom in right here on the waveform, um, the time that I want actually the decay to fill up is in between each, each of the gaps right here, just before the next snare drum hit. So that way it just helps to fill up the spaces in between. So um, the EMT140 is uh, quite a one-stop shop. Uh, reverb plugin uh, is actually a plate reverb. So uh, basically, what it does is that it's actually emulating an actual hardware um, where you have an actual plate reverb, and um, inside the the inside this this um, hardware is actually a metal plate, which um, which is being triggered based on sounds, and then there's a microphone at the other end that's going to capture um, the the reverb out from that plate. So that's why it's called a plate reverb. Um, so as you can see right here. Uh, I've got the stereo width all the way up to 100 because I'm just using it as a purely stereo signal. And then I have a little bit of EQ going on. I'm just using a high shelf 
um, somewhere at about 16K, um, just to tame it a little bit. And I'm not using anything on a low shelf, so I don't want a, a snare reverb that's sounding too bright that's going to overtake or overpower my actual dry snare drum. And here's a more important part, and usually for snare drums, I usually, or drums per se, or any percussion instrument, um, usually I always like to have my pre-delay wind all the way down to zero. Reason being is because um, what the pre-delay does is that it's going to add a little bit of time delay just before the actual reverb happens. So when you have a transient hit, for example, if I had this set up to 50 milliseconds, the transient hit and the actual reverb is going to be different by 50 milliseconds. So um, the reason why I have it at zero is because I do not want to have too much of a distinct um, audible echo um, that's going to happen. Uh, let me just show you how it sounds like if I were to have it up and running at uh, maybe at say a drastic pre-delay so they can hear what I'm actually talking about. So maybe here's in between maybe about 100 milliseconds. So here's how it's going to sound like. You can hear audibly the reverb happening right after the actual snare drum. So that can actually create a flaming kind of effect. So usually I try to stay clear of that. Um, by having it at 0 milliseconds. So now the reverb sounds as one as compared to it being separated like what I have got going on when uh, I have the pre-delay engaged. So let me just play this for you um, in the track and then I'm just going to pop in and out so they can hear what this reverb is doing. Pay attention to how the reverb is uh, engaging with the rest of the song. You can hear that the minute I put the reverb in, um, it, the snare sounds more cohesive, it sounds more glued into the track. The minute I take the reverb out, now the snare sounds a little bit bone dry. So um, it's just a, a little bit of a, a stark difference which I actually wanted to just help to complement and help to gel them together. So here's with the reverb once again without the vocals. And without the reverb. You can now hear that the spaces in between is now just empty because there's nothing to help to gel them together. So a little bit goes a long way. So I actually have the reverb tucked down about 15 dB. So it's just slightly quieter than the actual snare drum. And that way I can still have my dry snare drum sounding present, but the reverb is just there to be able to create some kind of space and ambience around it. So just want to recommend you to you know, try out different reverbs. Uh, in this case, I reached for the UAD EMT140 and it works pretty well. So hopefully next time I'll just show you another reverb or in another song that I, I'm actually using it again and you'll be able to compare the difference to what um, I'm actually doing with the different reverbs. So hopefully that helps you and until next time I'll see you all again.